Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, how do you know if you're in the right career fit? Brought to you by your Vanderbilt Alumni Association. I'm Sarah Whitney Anderson, Assistant Director of Alumni and Student Engagement, and I'm so glad you could join us from wherever you are this afternoon. Today's webinar will last around 45 minutes with time at the end for questions. Please feel free to type those questions as you have them in the questions box on the side panel of your screen. We will make sure these are addressed in some way before time is up. We will record today's webinar and post on the Expert Advice webpage in VU Connect. And we will share these recordings with you via email later on. Many of you know our pre presenter today and her many offerings that she does with us at Vanderbilt, and I'm so excited she's back with us today. Hallie Crawford, an alumna of Vanderbilt, is a certified career coach based in Atlanta, Georgia. Her company, HallieCrawford.com, and team of coaches, coaches have helped thousands of people nationwide uncover their dream career and make it a reality. Hallie is regularly featured as a career expert in the media, including Forbes.com, The Wall Street Journal, CNN, AJC, and Fox Business News. I'm excited to now present to her. Thank you, Sarah Whitney. That was perfect. And we greatly appreciate your time. Everyone being here today. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for for being here, especially during um, obviously what is a really difficult time for all of us in um, different ways. Um, so many people unemployed, um, working from home parents, which is me, um, and everything else. So we greatly appreciate your time. We are going to talk today about how to know if you're in the right career fit. And we do want to acknowledge, obviously, Sarah Whitney and I were talking about this before, that we acknowledge everything that's going on um, in the world and within the workforce especially. So one of the first things I'm going to talk about um, with you all today is some of the um, impacts, obviously, of COVID and the pandemic and give you just some quick advice um, today about not just how to think about what the right career fit is, because in some ways, I think this has been a wake up call for us um, in a lot of different ways, but professionally for some people as well. So in a sense, it's a good time to be thinking about this. Um, if you're in the right fit, maybe it's time to make, or later on will be the right time to make that change and that's okay. But we can use or leverage what in some cases for people is a little bit of this downtime to really evaluate what's truly important to us. I think that's, you know, if nothing else, this time has, has demonstrated that to us. So we will talk about the COVID just a little bit for job seekers, et cetera, that are on the call today. And we will talk about the long-term career direction as well and kind of how to think about this during these difficult times. So just really quickly, um, for those job seekers out there, um, if you are looking for something sooner than later and need to be in job search mode, um, some of the uh, ideas or suggestions we've got are on this first slide here. We highly recommend that, um, and actually I should say, even if you're not in job search mode, if you're checking out certain organizations or companies that you're interested in, do follow them on Twitter because companies and organizations sometimes will post job openings on um, or they'll tweet about them, okay? One of the ways to kind of stay engaged with your network, but maybe um, within a new industry that you're considering or even within your current industry is to join and leverage LinkedIn groups for online networking. Um, LinkedIn groups are gonna be a bigger deal, I think these days, given we can't go anywhere. Just FYI, flexjobs.com reduce their price for their membership. So if people are looking for remote work or part-time work or anything like that, please check out flexjobs.com as well as their sister website is called remote.com. <clears throat> um, if you are looking for something kind of right now or you know a side gig, set up some job alerts on Glassdoor or LinkedIn for remote or virtual work. Um, and please know too that there are companies and industries that are actually booming from this and are still hiring. All of our clients are still getting interviews. They are still networking with people. They're still thinking about, you know, what they want to be doing long term because all of us want to get back to, you know, the normal and business as usual, right? 
So recruiters and organizations may be a little bit slower to get back with them, <clears throat> obviously, kind of like it would be during holiday time, but their organizations and industries are still hiring. And I just wanted to give you kind of that good news that things are still happening. It just may be a little bit slower. And you also may want to kind of check out if you're looking for something interim to Google those industries or companies that are hiring in your area and companies that are benefiting from a shutdown. One of our clients who currently works at AT&T, he has an interview with a packaging company because obviously delivery is really, really important and a big deal right now. And packaging is part of that. So just wanted to acknowledge that. And as we get to our Q&A portion later in the, our, our time today, please feel free to ask any other um, specific questions about your current situation. A couple more things kind of related to that is please do connect with me um, on LinkedIn for more career advice during this time. We are posting a lot of articles, videos, et cetera, to help people with whatever situation they're in due to COVID. So find me on LinkedIn and connect. And then we are actually posting a lot on our career blog, um, more than we usually do, again, to give you specific um, advice for this situation and this time. So I wanted to let you all know as we move into our specific um, topic for today as well, that <clears throat> the advice that I'm going to give you um, about how to know if in, you're in the right career fit and if it's time to make a move or it's better to stay put are pieces of advice from my own personal experience as well. And that's the reason why this picture is on the slide right now. This is me on the far left, my mom and my sister. This is when I was in my early 20s. I was actually living in my mother's basement um, at the time in Atlanta. Um, I had had five different jobs in completely different industries by the time I was 25, and I had no idea what I was doing um, and what I wanted to do. And <clears throat> in the different jobs that I had, I knew that there was something off with each of them and none of them were perfect, but honestly, I wasn't sure if they were the right thing long term. So this is why we do what we do all day, every day today as career coaches within my organization is help people figure out what the right long term career direction is. And we want you to know that <clears throat> outside of all the frustration and stress that's going on related to the pandemic, some of that may be stuff that's just kind of in passing and given, you know, a sign of the times right now. And you may find um, at the end of our webinar today that you're like, you know what, I am in the right fit. It's just, it's been really difficult for the past several months because of a specific project I've been working on. And then you add this to the plate and everything else, right? Um, and some of you may decide mm, it is time to make a move and make a change. And I may not do that right now because it may be harder for me to do it right now, but I'm going to be ready to go when the time is right and everything opens up. We want you to know that it is possible to feel really engaged in your work, connected to your coworkers and connected to what you do every day in the flow, so to speak, and leveraging and using your natural talents and um, being fulfilled in what you do. And we've been doing this for over 19 years now. I know I sound like I'm 12, I'm actually 47. Um, <clears throat> and we want you to know that it is possible to truly enjoy what you do. One of the things I did wanna let you know though, from the second slide here, this next slide, is that figuring out your career direction long-term, it's also, it's possible to really love it, but it's also not Pollyanna, okay? This isn't something that you snap your fingers and you figure out what you wanna be doing for the rest of your life, like overnight. It takes some time and thought. So please know that the fact that you're here in the first place and uncertain, you're normal. There are so many other people out there that feel the same way, it's understandable. And we want you to know and kind of have the right perspective about this, that it's not Pollyanna. It does take work. It takes thought and self-reflection to know if you're in the right job or not and what the right path is in the long run. And it definitely isn't do what you love and the money will follow, right? So on the one hand, um, I would say for me, just using me as a quick example, I absolutely love what I do. But I'll tell you that it's definitely not do what you love and the money will follow. I've worked very hard to get to where I am, okay? But because I love it so much and enjoy it and feel like I'm meant to do it, 
the good stuff about it so far outweighs the bad that I barely notice those things. So what I want you to kind of get um, one of the perspectives, if you will, or the foundational perspective I want you to take um, on all of the advice that we're talking about today, and apparently my dog agrees, that's one of the things about working from home, is that the you want to be going for something that where the good so far outweighs the bad about what you do that you barely notice the difficult or bad stuff, okay? So the deal is that any job that you have, even if it is the right fit, everyone, no day is going to be perfect. You're always going to have to deal with, you know, office politics, tasks that you don't want to deal with, that you'd rather not have to perform or whatever. Um, we all have to kind of take a grain of, you know, it's, it's like you got to take some of the bad stuff with a grain of salt. But what you're going for to frame this out is that you want to find a job and think about your current position where you are now is, does the good stuff about what I do so far outweigh the bad things or the things I don't like as much that I barely notice what those bad things are? That's what we're going for and to help you have the right perspective, okay? So here's our agenda. Let's talk about what we're gonna discuss today. We're gonna talk about why career fulfillment is so important. I'm gonna give you eight red flags that will help you understand and know if you're in the right or the wrong fit, okay, career-wise. We're gonna talk about how to define fulfillment and how to know if it is present in your current job and your career. And then we'll talk about our ideal career model as well to help you understand and know once and for all, okay, am I in the right long-term position? Um, just really quickly, as Sarah Whitney said, um, you will receive a recording of our presentation today, of our webinar. And also, though, if any of you would like um, a copy of the PowerPoint slides so you don't feel like you have to be writing everything down frantically, that's how I am. I'm a huge writer and I take a huge note taker and I take too many notes sometimes. Um, please just email us at admin at halleycrawford.com. We'd be happy to share this with you just so you have that. Okay, so let's talk about why this is important. Too many people out there are still in, not in the right fit job-wise. They may be really close, but it's like not quite. Every several, you know, I would say about every three to five years, give or take, we come across or see that either the Gallup organization or the conference board, there's lots of different places that will do a study of people that are unsatisfied or satisfied in their jobs. And typically, it's usually erring on the side, unfortunately, of dissatisfaction. So one of the most more recent Gallup studies on the American workforce 51% aren't, aren't engaged at work. They don't feel connected to their jobs. And unfortunately, then they tend to do the bare minimum. So one of the things we want you to think about first, and we'll do our um, first poll here in just a moment, is we want you to kind of assess, get out your pen and paper for us, um, <clears throat> and assess and think about where do I fall in, e in this range of satisfaction, if you will. Am I actually relatively satisfied and I'm just, I've been a little bit frustrated for the past few months. So, you know, I'll probably stay put for a while longer, but I want to think about this for the long run. You want, you could give yourself, you know, maybe about a year to kind of evaluate things and make the change. Somewhat satisfied, you need to think about and separate what works for you in your current job and what doesn't work for you in your current job. And start to write this out. This is one of the first exercises that we'll do with our clients is have them write out a, a list of likes and dislikes in their current position so that they can see it in black and white and understand what's going well and what's not going well. Because even, just by the way, writing that out helps you be more objective about what's going on, helps you identify and see if there are themes between those things that are not working. OK, and also helps you understand, oh, gosh, there's only like three or four things that aren't working and the majority of it is actually good. So maybe I am in the right fit. OK, so a lot of good um, things that can come out of just writing this basic list. And then finally, if you feel very unsatisfied, you want to give yourself at least we say between two and three months to really define the right fit. It can take a little bit shorter for some people, a little bit longer for the majority of people. I usually say around three months to be safe um, if you've been working and in the workforce for at least about five years. Um, but you need to give yourself time to really figure this out. 
And Sarah Whitney, if we can um, go ahead and start this first poll, that would be great. Our first question is, how many of you currently feel engaged at work on a consistent basis? And we understand that, you know, if the majority of you say no, that's why you're here and we get that. So in terms of the people that are very unsatisfied, just by the way, give yourself about three months to really figure things out. And then for each um, $10,000 that you are needing and wanting to make in salary, you want to give yourself about a month of job searching for each of that $10,000. Just That's kind of a rule of thumb. It can go a little bit faster. For some people, it may be a little bit slower, but that's the way to kind of calculate how long your job search might take under normal circumstances. And so, Sarah Whitney, if you could um, let us know the poll results, that'd be great. Yes, we have 67% say yes and 33% say no. Okay, all right, so that's why you're here. Totally makes sense. And for those of you, the 33%, please think about where you fall in one of these other buckets so that you understand how quickly and how urgently you need to figure this out in order to start making the change, okay? Um, the other reason why this is so important is obviously it leads to you know workers and employees being um, discontent, and it does take a, a toll on your quality of life inside and outside of work. And as a result, companies will notice, and you will notice too, that your productivity will be lower, your self-esteem is lower. This is one of the things we do find, so just if this is happening for you, please know that you're normal, that we find a lot of our clients when they come to us because they're not in the right fit, their self-esteem is taking a hit and they need help bringing their, their confidence back. And then finally, obviously, that low sense of fulfillment. We want you to know from this next slide here is we talked about finding the right fit and 98% of our clients, they're very happy with the work that we do with them and they figure out their direction. One of the things we did want you all to know though is that the majority of our clients as well make less dramatic of a career change than they thought they needed to. Most people, because they're so frustrated um, with what they're, they've been doing, understandably, they feel like, oh my gosh, I have to go be a chef or a circus clown or something, you know, completely different. But nine times out of 10, like a lot of people, 70%, give or take, they just may, need to make a course correction. So I do want you to understand that in order to feel engaged, connection, connected to what you do, fulfilled and useful, in your work environment and at your job, you probably don't need to make as big of a change as you think, because we all chose our careers for a reason. Like hopefully, right? You didn't go into your job saying, I'm gonna hate this, let me go try it. So there are reasons why you chose it, and that's why the likes and dislikes list that we talked about a moment ago can really help you a lot evaluate what's working, what's not, and do you need to get back in part to why you started out in your industry in the first place? Um, some of the things that should be criteria of whether you are in the right fit or not, okay, is on this next slide. So this was a great TED Talk. It came out several years ago, but it's about what motivates people at work, okay? And so I would suggest writing these items down because these are part of, when we get to our red flag test in just a moment here on the next slide, these are some of the additional things that you want to be thinking about to find out if you're in the right fit or not, okay? Most people want to see the fruits of their labor in some way, shape, or form. So one of the questions you wanna ask yourself is, am I seeing the results of my work and in a way that works for me? Am I good with that? Is it tangible enough, for example, or ooh, is part of the problem that I'm seeing results, but it's not as frequent as I want to, or it's too intangible for me. So think about, seeing results and how well that works for you for where you are now. The next thing that you want to think about is how appreciated do you feel um, at your job currently? And we know that obviously given the times now, the appreciation probably feels a little bit lower, but how appreciated on a regular basis do you feel about the work that you do? Whether it's from your boss, your coworkers, or your clients, it may not make as much of a difference to you if your boss, for example, gives you appreciation, as long as your customers or your clients do. Whatever works best for you, however you define it, that's what matters. 
do you feel challenged on a regular basis is the next one. So most of us, okay, I have had some clients come to us saying, you know, I'm at their, when they're closer to the end of their career, and this is more normal when you're closer to the end, um, and you're looking at your encore career, you know, they want to kind of phone it in. Okay, that's fine. But the majority of us want hard projects that challenge us, make us learn and stretch as a person and as a professional. So you need to think about how challenging your current job is as well, and is it in the right way? And then finally, do you feel like your work now helps others or organizations and the people that you want to help or the organizations that you want to help? Do you feel good about what you do that it helps others in some way that you're having a positive impact? This is another kind of criteria that you want to consider. Again, these are the ones, some of the ones that most people consider are important. So use these kind of as your starting point when you're starting to evaluate. Okay, let's talk about our second agenda item for today and the red flags that will kind of let you know, if you will, that you're in the wrong fit. If these are the case for you on a consistent, regular basis, and you've got a certain number of them, we'll tell you the answers closer to the, the end here, but um, if you've got more than, you know, like five, four or five, give or take, then you're most likely in the wrong fit. So let's take a look at these. So our eight red flags are, number one, if you dread getting out of bed every single morning, and it's a consistent, on a consistent regular basis, it's not just Monday morning, et cetera, hitting the snooze button a bunch. Most of us, we don't need to feel that way, and we shouldn't feel that way. I will tell you that being realistic about it, sure, there are days that I would rather not get out of bed in the morning, of course, and be independently wealthy and not work at all or feel like I have to, okay? I actually, I um, should say more clearly that I would want to do what I do in retirement, but just have it be less pressure, you know, not have to do it necessarily. But if you dread getting out of bed every single morning, that's definitely a red flag. If your work relationships, as well as your performance, are suffering in some way, shape, or form, that's a huge red flag. Um, this could be about, gosh, I'm not leveraging my strengths in the right way or not enough, or I'm being required to do something that I'm just not that good at. And if that's the case, that's, just, that's not just about your fulfillment, but it is about you being in the wrong fit because you're not leveraging the right strengths and you need to make a shift because of that. If you're working a lot, for example, and have no life balance, or you know, even if you're not working that much, but you don't get any joy or satisfaction from your work, that's a huge red flag. You should, and we all should be able to, we are able to, get joy and satisfaction from what we do. That is possible. I'll just tell you that point blank, like we've been saying earlier. And if you started to kind of slack off like senioritis a little bit and just ha don't have a lot of motivation, that's a huge red flag as well. Because if we are honoring our values and our job honors our values on a regular basis in, in terms of what we do and what's important to us as people and as professionals, then we will have this sense of motivation. Will it ebb and flow over time? Absolutely. It's not going to be perfect all the time, as we said. But if it's a consistent thing, big problem. The next four are if you feel in any way, shape, or form that you have to become or kind of turn into somebody else at your job, that you can't truly be kind of true to who you are and be authentic, then that's a problem as well. We all know, and it's normal, we all have what you know we would call a professional persona versus a personal persona. That's normal. We tend to, everyone tends to act a little bit differently at work just because we're supposed to be professional. That's normal and typical, and I'm not talking about that. If you feel like you cannot be truly yourself, meaning you're not in the flow, you can't you know, be authentic in any way, shape, or form, and it's just not a fit for you work environment-wise, for example, then that's a problem. Number six is if your job doesn't make use of your talents and strengths, then that's a huge problem. Our strengths are directly correlated to our sense of fulfillment. And if you spend most of your time complaining about your job with friends, family, spouse, partner, et cetera, big problem there. And if you regularly fantasize, this one's kind of funny, I think, but about quitting, being fired or let go, we actually have clients tell us this. There was a woman I was working with years ago, and I just remember it vividly because it was so poignant. 
we had gotten on our coaching calls, probably like our third call in. And I knew obviously she wasn't happy at her job. And um, we had talked about whether the, she should quit or not or whatever. And she sounded really good that day. And we were about a minute into it. And I said, you know, what's going on? You sound really good today. And she said, oh, I feel great. I got let go um, last week. And I get that not everyone is going to say that. And, you know, career and job stability is critical and important. But for this particular person, and this does happen with some of our clients, when the job is impacting you so much mentally and physically that it's almost making you ill, then for some people, they do want to get fired. And that was the best thing for her in a lot of ways that happened to her because it really forced her to then buckle down on her job search. So here's the criteria, so to speak. One or two red flags, if that's the case for you with this checklist, you may just be going through a little bit of a rough patch. We would suggest you reevaluate it in about a month. Think about whether it is just a rough patch, going back to the what do I like and what don't I like about what I do. And you may need to stretch this reevaluation, um, so to speak, for another couple months after we are all allowed to you know, get back to work and everything else too, because some of your dissatisfaction could be for, from what's going on. If it's three to four red flags, you're probably not in the right career, but you may be closer to your ideal than you think. Write down what works and what doesn't work to get started, like we said. And you may need to think about, gosh, do I need to be doing what, exactly what I'm doing right now, the same job title or role, but within a different organization or within a different industry? We had a woman once who worked at Arthur Anderson. And when she first come to, came to us, she lived in Chicago and she said, you know, I feel like I should just go be a chef. I'm just so unhappy and miserable and I need to just do something dramatically different. Okay. So when we went through the process with her, she actually realized that there was a lot about what she did that she really enjoyed and loved. It was using, um, or was the best use, so to speak, in a lot of ways of her natural talents and her strengths. And she actually loved her clients. When it came down to it, her boss was really the source of a lot of her frustration and angst. And so, and one of the other things I should say too, is what she decided in the end was she still wanted to be in a consultative or a, a consulting type of role, but she wanted to work in-house instead, like as a consultant for a business strategist or as a business strategist, I should say, for an organization or company. Because one of the other things that was wearing on her was all of the travel, okay? So that's an example of, hey, do I need to make a course correction? And then finally, and if we wanna go ahead and open up the, the second poll here, Sarah Whitney, that would be great. We're curious kinda of if you guys are in the right fit or not based on this red flag test so far. If there are more than five red flags, it's definitely time to make a change. And that doesn't mean that your change has to be dramatic, but be prepared that it may need to be a little bit more than just a course correction, like we said. Because if you're that unhappy and unsatisfied, you may need to be thinking outside the box a little bit more about, gosh, maybe I do need to change into a completely different role. But it could be a different role, again, within the same industry. So try to think about the low-hanging fruit um, to make it a little bit easier on yourselves as well. So go ahead and enter in your response to that poll, if you would, everybody. I'm going to get some water here for a second. All right, Hallie, we've got 50% uh, with yes and 50% with no. Okay, gotcha. All right, so half and half. So please do, everyone, like we said, kind of categorize where you are, how dramatic of a change do you think you need to make. And as we talk here a little bit more today, too, I am going to give you another checklist using our ideal career model that will definitely help you narrow down for sure one way or the other, as well as what items you may need to make the changes in. I did want to mention just really quickly, if anyone feels like they need some additional advice about anything we talked about today or anything else related to your career, I'm happy to do a free career strategy session with you to give you some advice on any of your goals that you need. You would just email us at admin at halliecrawford.com for that to set that up. We'll send you a link. All right. So our third and last step here before we get to our Q&A is going to be Thinking about defining fulfillment. So the reason why we bring up fulfillment to you um, in a webinar like this is because we have found that 
when people feel rewarded and fulfilled by what they do at work, a lot of the other pieces about what's important to them will fall into place a lot more easily. And it just like you're able to overlook, I guess the best way to say it too, is that you're able to overlook some of the difficulties or the things you don't like about what you do if you are doing something that is naturally fulfilling and rewarding for you. So one of the next things you want to ask yourselves is, does your current job bring you a sense of fulfillment in some way, shape, or form? And really noodle on this because fulfillment can mean different things to different people. So you really need to think about, you know, what does fulfillment mean to me at this point in my life and my career, what's really important, and think truly and deeply about, okay, the tasks that I perform and, you know, what I'm supposed to do within my job and the results I'm supposed to achieve or produce, are those results really rewarding to me, okay? Here are the ways, and I'm going to bring all of these up just right now, okay, so we've got them, is there are four basic ways to de begin um, the process of defining fulfillment to you, okay? And those are shown on this next slide here. So when you're thinking about this and you're curious about it, one of the first things that you can do is start to think about and write about how do I define success? What does success mean to me? Do this as a quick journaling exercise for yourself. Spit out and blurt out everything that comes to your mind, okay? How do I define success? What does it mean to me at this point in my life? Is it I want to have a sense of accomplishment? Is it a certain salary? Is it that I want to be able to produce this result or see this kind of impact in the world? The second thing you can do is to start to identify your interests. What are the things that you do in your personal life but also in your work life that you tend to lose track of time? And are you doing enough of those at work? Now, I'm not saying suddenly we're going to bring all of our hobbies to work. That's not it. But if you start to think about what some of your interests are outside of work, you can start to get clues about what is rewarding and fulfilling to you, what some of your values are from what your natural interests are and what the themes are between those things. A third thing you can do to think about how to define fulfillment for you is to think about what would be your ideal day at work? What qualities would that day have? And then finally, one of the juiciest, kind of most in-depth ones that we do with our clients is to help them identify their top three career values by writing down and thinking about a peak experience in their lives. We always have our clients do a personal peak experience, by the way, because then that gets closer to what would truly make sense for them deep down, what's you know true to their heart, so to speak. And write about what was cool about that peak experience for you. Don't worry as much about the details and who was there or anything like that. Sorry about that, guys. I need to turn that off. Um, who was there? You know, think more about and ask yourself related to the peak experience, what was cool about that experience for you? By the way, it can be a moment in time. It could be a period of time. And we're not talking about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Like it can be as simple as one of our clients had, I was the editor of my high school yearbook and I just love that year. Think about why that was. So for him, it was, I loved the connection I had with my coworkers. I love telling stories. You'll start to identify when you think about what your peak experience is and write about it, you'll start to identify what some of your values are because you'll see themes in the things that you're writing about related to what was cool about it, okay? So this is how, these are some basic steps to help you begin to define what fulfillment means to you. And we basically want all of our clients to know what their top three career values are, make sure that their job honors those values on a regular basis, and that it honors them on a regular basis in the long run, okay? The next thing we want you to do is we want you to review our ideal career model, which I'll show you in just a moment. The ideal career model that we have gives you the eight pieces that you need to consider in order to know what the right career path is for you, very objectively. It helps you be more objective about what's working and what's not working in your current career, and consider all the necessary components of the right fit. And we want you to review each piece of the pieces of the model one by one, step by step, okay? And I did want to share this with you all, but I'm going to go back to it in just a second here because it'll make more sense once I show you this model. 
Here is our ideal career model. These are the eight pieces. We suggest that you start with fulfillment and you go left. You think about enjoyment. Are my tasks every day enjoyable for the most part? Am I leveraging my talents and skills at work on a consistent basis? Am I leveraging classes that I took at Vanderbilt and elsewhere education that I want to be leveraging or not? Um, past experience, am I leveraging my experience and expertise? Is my job and role and work environment a fit for my personality type? Am I in the right work environment in terms of the right culture? And finally, am I being compensated in a way that feels good to me and getting paid what I'm worth, basically? So this is how you define from a high level view each piece. Then you want to think about for yourselves which ones are the highest priority. It's a good idea to take all eight of these and say, okay, from one to eight, these are the most important to me. And the deal is, remember we talked before about um, – the good so far outweighing the bad, the deal is that when you are at choice with your career path, you're making a conscious choice about what works for you and what doesn't work, you are going to feel more fulfilled, okay? Wanted to share this with you guys just really quickly. Our ideal career workbook um, that we use with all of our clients, we're happy to give you a 50% discount off on it. The link is at the bottom. The coupon code is there, and we'll send this to you, Sarah Whitney. Um, I'll send you a, a template of this, so we've got it. But happy to send this to you in, a, in the follow-up email so that you have it. This workbook follows the ideal career model to help you figure out if you're in the right fit, and if not, what you need to do about it. This is our whole coaching program that we use with all of our clients, step-by-step, step, so that you can work through this process on your own, at your own pace, okay? Finally, we want to think about for, and I wanted to talk with you all about um, a career, career assessments and how those help or not, because we have a lot of clients want to ask us about career assessments and kind of where that fits in with this whole piece here. So we'll do our last poll here in just a moment. But there are reasons why we get into the wrong fit and, and to understand why people get off on the wrong track, so to speak. There's a lot of different reasons this happens for people. It could be that we're good at something, but it's just no longer rewarding for us. It could be that we chose our current career path based on other people giving us that advice and telling us, hey, you should try this out. It could be that the job was offered and you needed it to pay the bills, so you took it. Some of our clients will tell us they feel like they've got the golden handcuffs on. Your organization throws money or perks at you even though you're unhappy and it's just hard to leave because we all stay to, to the, you know, oh, I'm going to get my next bonus, so I'm going to stay through that. We want you to keep in mind that if you've ever taken a career assessment or you plan on leveraging one of those, they are very useful and helpful. It's one piece to the puzzle. And just really quickly, let me show you this slide here. Career assessments are helpful, everyone, but we just want to remind you that if you've taken something like the DISC or Myers-Briggs, the career assessment is only testing you for one of the pieces of the model. Those tests are great. We really like them because it gives you accurate information in a very short period, piece, period of time, if you will, you know, 30 minutes a day, whatever it is. But you need to keep in mind that those assessments are only testing you for one of these pieces of the model. They're not telling you how much any of these jobs that they might be recommending or kind of pointing you towards what you'll get paid. And for example, the Strengths Finder assessment tells you about your talents and skills. It's not telling you about the right work environment or whether you're using or leveraging your past experience. So if any of you have felt like, gosh, I've taken this career assessment and oh, it didn't help me, so forget it, please know that if you have, that those results are actually useful. You just need to use them as part of the whole puzzle. So while we do this last poll here, Sarah Whitney, if you could pull that up, we are curious how many of you have taken a career assessment to help you figure this out if you're in the right fit or not. Go ahead and fill that out for us. And one of the reasons that we would, or one of the things I would suggest that you all do is think about why now, currently, why are you in your current job? What keeps you there? And are you there for the right reasons or is it the wrong reasons? And that's part of why you may need to think about, it's not the right fit anymore because I'm here for the wrong reasons and it's time to make a change. So go ahead and fill out this poll for us if you would please. We have 75% with yes and 25% with no. 
Yeah, a lot of people have. Sarah Whitney, thanks for sharing that. That's great. So if you've taken an assessment and you're not sure how it fits, just remember, go back to our career model and put it into the right piece of the puzzle, but then start to look at what the other pieces of the puzzle are and ask yourself, am I in this job for the right reasons or is it for the wrong reasons like we said? So quick review before we get to um, a Q our Q&A for today. We talked about why it's important to be in the right fit, the eight red flags for the wrong fit. We do want you to take that quiz for yourself so that you can really get a clear sense of where you fall. Do take on the Career Values Peak Experience assignment. It is fantastic. People get so much value out of that. And then finally, feel free to get a copy of the presentation, print out this ideal career model, because it literally can serve as a really good checklist for you to figure out what is going well in your job and what's working and what's not. And it gives you that framework to think about things in the right way and correctly and more objectively versus feeling like, gosh, I'm not really sure if I'm in the right fit, A, and B, I'm not really sure what to do about that. If any of you would like to talk to us more about our career coaching services, we are happy to chat with you about that. Just email us at admin at halliecrawford.com. And then finally, as we move to our Q&A, we'd like you to get out your pen and paper right now, please, and write down two action steps that you will take as a result of being here today. It could be, I'm gonna work on my career values. It could be, I'm gonna print out the career model. Happy to do that free career strategy session with any of you, so that could be one of your action items too. Go ahead and write those out for us. And then I'm gonna close my talky talky part of today with the quote that I always close with because I love it, the greatest risk in life is not taking one. You know, one of the, the good, um, more positive things or one of the positive things I think that has come out of um, the COVID crisis is that we are evaluating and paying close attention to what's really important to us in our lives. It's forcing us to do that. And one of the other things is it's forcing innovation and creative thinking. You know, business owners like me are being forced to figure out how do we serve our constituents and be there for them during this time? And what are the creative ways we may need to retool or adjust what we do? and take those risks in the right way in order to make things happen. So I realize that I may be asking you to take some risks today, to, but to be thinking about this and considering making a move, whether it's later this year or early next year or, or sooner than that, I get that. But remember, at the end of your lives, do you wanna say, I didn't, you know, I stayed scared and I didn't try at all, or do you wanna say you tried to take that risk even if you failed? Um, we all know the answer. We want to say we tried, even if it didn't work out exactly as we planned. All right, good. So let's move to our Q&A. And Sarah Whitney, if you could read anything that has come through for me, that would be fantastic. And just by the way, everyone, I am going to pull up this coupon code so that you can um, jot down um, the website. And the coupon code, by the way, is alumni. You just type it in just like that if you want to take advantage of it. Okay, ready for Q&A. All right, first question. What should you do if you enjoy most of your work, but you aren't being compensated well and have been told there's no way to get paid more? Great question. That means you're at a, at a dead end, so to speak, right? So what I would do here, if you've already asked and if you are not interested in or able to um, negotiate for something else outside of compensation that actually would be valuable for you. Like maybe it's, hey, can you pay for more of my health, health benefits or more flex time or whatever it is. What you probably need to do is look for a different organization, you know, within your same industry, for example, and make a move there where you can get compensated more. So, um, normally when people come to us with this problem, they have exhausted all options at their current organization. And if it's like, you know, it's either small and you can't move to a different position or that different position wouldn't be rewarding for you, most likely you need to make a move to a different organization within your industry. Great question. All right. How much time should I spend on defining my career values? Ooh, that's a really good one too. So um, I would give yourself like about a week, give or take, 
Not that you're going to be working on it every single minute of that week, obviously. But you want to work on your values over time because they're not the kind of thing that they're just going to, you know, come out of you um, right away necessarily and be that obvious. And also, you might realize as you're thinking about it, you might realize what some of your values are over time. So I would give yourself like maybe a full like hour, hour and a half or something like that all told. Start out with like 30 to 40 minutes at the beginning, thinking about your peak experience, writing some things out. We encourage you to share them with someone else um, to get their feedback on what your values might be, because sometimes someone else has an easier time kind of pointing out what may be going on there. And then come back to it um, in another few days and spend another like half an hour um, or two on, um, on, on that to really define what they are. It does take some self-reflection is the bottom line. So give yourself a week to really narrow them down fully, but maybe, you know, hour and a half or so all told. Great question. Hope that answers as a start. All right, next question. If your boss is someone you cannot talk about a career move with, who should you look for to talk about moving into a different job or career? Perhaps a mentor? Yeah, a mentor is a good one. So a mentor, a career coach, I mean, that's what we do all day, every day, obviously. So someone in your circle or a mentor, friend or family member that you admire um, and trust their advice, um, all of those can be kind of, you know, fair game in some way. I would add those to your list to talk about making a transition. I read to, or I was reading before it was finished, sorry. and. How long do you, or sorry, this question is still filling in. Oh yeah, no worries. I know how that goes. It's like the <laughs> phone, you know, the phone dots and you're like, okay, wait. <laughs> um, okay, the question is, after finding said mentor, how long do you wait to include that person in while applying for a new job? So I think they're trying to get at, if they should, when at what last moment do you put your current boss as like a um, a person when you're interviewing? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, let them know that you're intending to make a move. I think so. I think that's what the question yeah. is. Sorry if I misunderstood that. So, Feel free to read, submit. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, it depends on how much notice you're required to give by your organization. Usually, it's the two weeks. And I, by the way, unless for some reason you've got a great relationship with your boss and you know that they're not going to, you know, force you out by letting them know earlier in advance that you're going to make a move and you want to do that for them, you know, that's obviously a little bit different. But normally I tell people, wait until you have another offer in hand, bottom line, because, you know, you just, you don't want to make things too awkward. So unless you have some great working relationship and you can be really honest. I usually, you know, have people wait until it's time to make the move. All right, next question. Uh, what if I'm not sure what my values are after doing the peak experience exercise? Um, definitely get the workbook because the workbook helps you figure that out a little bit more and gives you some examples of that. Um, and as part of that, too, I would talk with us about them, talk with a friend or family, goes back to that as well. Um, those would be the things that I would do because it is like for some people, figuring out their values is relatively easy. Um, and for others, they need a little bit more help with it. But talking things through with somebody else, as well as getting a little bit more, um, some more ideas about how to figure it out um, through this workbook. Um, I would honestly, I would just recommend those things because um, that'll help not just, hey, am I on the right track and am I covering all of my bases or are the things that I've come up with, are they really values or not? And getting that, you know, kind of objective feedback really helps. Good question. Well, you oh, know. we just got another one. Man, love this. Okay. When looking for new jobs, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the job title, which may not actually align with the values or skill sets you're looking for. How would you recommend finding a job that's a good fit? Come up with keywords for tasks that you like performing, for your values and for like interests and strengths. 
and that will help you um, brainstorm alternative options. So don't just be brainstorming using the job title itself, for example, on a job board, but put in keywords for interests, strengths, and tasks that you like to perform. That will help you kind of noodle around about what else is out there that could have these components. That's a good question too. All right, I'm waiting before I jump like last time. I think we're good on questions. So thank you so much, Hallie, for today. Your encouragement, as always, um, it's just it means even more today um, and what we're going through. So later this week, I'll send up a follow up email with this archived link um, as well as the resources that Hallie mentioned. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or Hallie. Um, we, and I can give you her email if you need anything. We're always looking to approve upon our offerings, so please be in touch and let us know how we can best support you in these times right now. Thanks for joining us and everyone have a great day. Thanks everybody, have a good one. Good luck, stay safe.